Well, Dallas, it is an absolute pleasure to be talking to you about The Chosen, a series that so many fans have loved. Season three was described as the one where the disciples learn the cost of following Jesus. What is the overarching theme of season four? Well, season four, what's kind of funny about it is that they don't learn a whole lot. That's the point, is that the disciples are missing some of the message that Jesus is trying to teach. Uh, he's trying to teach them about what the kingdom really looks like, and they're focused on their status. They're focused on where they belong. He's trying to say, no, no, that's what other people are worried about. You're gonna lose your life. You're gonna, you have to surrender. You have to sacrifice. And they're like, okay, fine, but um, can I be on your right and left hand when we get up to heaven and I can share in your glory? And it makes him sad. And that's one of the things that he experiences often through the season is they're getting closer and closer to Holy Week, closer and closer to his death. And scripture shows that the, just, he kept telling them and warning them. And they were like, just went right over their heads. It wasn't until after his death and resurrection that they became passionate, fervent, willing to die, uh, spreading his word quite uh, as much as he was hoping that they that, mm. he, that they would. So we start to approach some of the sadness in this season. So mm. I don't want to make people worried about it. There's a lot of joy too. There's a lot of great biblical stories that we cover. But uh, this is when you start to see human nature mm. and the disciples are kind of missing the point a little bit. How does it affect Jesus that they aren't getting it? They've spent so much time with him. They're not understanding. How does that impact him? I believe that uh, there are several moments when you see in the Gospels, Jesus is crying. Jesus is expressing sadness about Jerusalem. He's saying to the Pharisees, woe to you. Uh, there's a lot of expressions in the Gospels of Jesus going, you are missing it. This is, you know, he tells to the religious leaders, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're focused so much on the wrong things. And then sometimes he says that to his own disciples. Uh, so it, it, it makes him sad. It, mm. And uh, you, you see in scripture that it's not until the Garden of Gethsemane that he's extremely sad about his death. Most of his sadness comes from how others are responding and missing the point. And mm. I think sometimes the burden of being the Messiah and being the Son of God among other human beings who are so flawed is sometimes a great weight for him to carry. And the way you've represented the human side of Jesus is something that makes him so relatable to so many people. What is it about Jesus you think makes him someone people want to follow, whether it's in the context of him as a character or him as a savior to so many? I don't believe it was stained glass windows and statues and paintings that we see where he's so formal and distant and reverent. I don't believe that thousands would have wanted to be around him all the time. I do believe that he was magnetic and charismatic and funny and compelling. Now, that's different from successful, accomplished. Mm. He wasn't those things. He was humble. Um, but I do believe that his humility and his connection, his personal connection with people, drew them to him unlike any other rabbi who had ever lived and unlike any leader who had ever lived. Now then, of course, there is the savior part, the fact that he is healing people, not only of their physical diseases, but their spiritual sickness. And so that's kind of the whole point of the show is you see the, the popularity growing and everyone has different reasons. And I think that when in, in the context of seven seasons, we get to explore all of those different mm -hmm. reasons. It's different for everybody, just like it is today. Does the success of the series make it harder or put pressure on you as the creator of the series to, to meet those expectations? My job is to ignore that. Uh, it, it would be too hard if I focused on it or if I started having goals. Goals like, I want to be number one at the box office. Um, I want to win an award. I want to avoid controversy. I want to make everyone happy. I want to live up to the last season. When I'm sitting in front of a blank computer screen with my co-writers and we're coming up with a new season, if we're thinking about any of those things, it will cripple us. Mm -hmm. We want to be thinking of how do we continue this story and keep being authentic, keep uh, pursuing what we believe God wants for us. That is my only focus. The rest of it I can think about when the show's done. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts on it with us today. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, no, I, I loved chatting with you and thanks for uh, thanks for showing up right on the, on the set in the middle of the day. It's fun. It's really become a family and it's bittersweet to know where last week it was like the halfway point to not only the season being over, but the series. Wow. But there, it's so much reassuring knowing we still have half a ways to go with these yeah. guys because I love them. I love them. They say the struggle is real. I say the struggle reveals how you deal with the monster that's inside you. I don't buy into the luck. I put my faith and my trust in my team. Everything that we done been through. I, 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 gasoline in my veins.